Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Pestilent Spirit deck, a 3 mana 3 2 spirit with menace and a death touch saying instant and sorcery spells you control have death touch. Now, when Underworld Fires from Theros Beyond Death got revealed, I thought it might have been a good fit with the Pestilent Spirit. Sadly, the Underworld Fires is symmetrical, it also deals 1 damage to our creatures, which means it would basically kill everything in play with a Pestilent Spirit. So that's not quite the direction I want to be headed, but we do still have a lot of cheap burn spells, and especially Chandra's Parahelix works quite well with the Pestilent Spirit, as we can deal 1 damage to 2 different creatures and take them both out thanks to the Spirit giving the Power Helix Death Touch. So we're essentially a red-black aggro deck that has a few of these cheap burn spells that play quite well with the Pestilent Spirit. That way we can still take out larger creatures that a typical red aggro deck would struggle with. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got a lot of knights, so we've got some knight synergies with Knight of the Abel Legion, which is a very strong one-drop alongside Fervent Champion, which has a couple extra knights to go with it, so it can grant the plus one plus O to an attacking knight. We've got the full playset of Shock as a cheap burn spell, plays well with the Pestilent Spirit, plays well with Spectacle, so just a great card in this deck. And then at 2 mana we've got our Stormfist Crusader as another knight that also helps us draw extra cards, so makes it easier to assemble the combo of Spirit plus some uh, burn spells. And of course if we can cheaply kill the opponent's creatures with our burn spells with a Spirit in play, we can kind of offset the extra card advantage that they would gain from the Crusader. And then we also have the full playset of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, which we can pretty easily escape thanks to all these cheap instants and sorceries that end up in the graveyard. And we also have a Fable Passage as a land that will end up in the graveyard. We've got our four copies of Chandra Sparrow Helix, which is a serviceable card but only really shines once we have a Pestle and Spirit in play. And then we've got our four spirits and then some spectacle cards with a light up the stage to provide some more card advantage and secure the critics as potentially one mana, three damage burn spell. And then also two copies of Carnival Carnage can use a Carnival to deal one damage to a creature or planeswalker and one damage to that permanence controller. So another way to kill a creature with a spirit in play. And then Carnage for four mana can deal three damage to an opponent and to make them discard two cards. So that's another way to potentially mitigate the Crusader's card draw. And then the mana base is not amazing, but we do have a total of 12 untapped red sources, which is a priority, and then only 10 untapped black, but then also Fable Passage as an extra land that can help us with Croxa. And then, of course, for Blood Crypt, 8 Mountains and 6 Swamps. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine hands. Fetch up a mountain. And then we'll be able to play Crusader on two. Opponent on blue black with a Thought Erasher. Alright. Might take away my Crusader. Unless they have another answer for it. Takes a Croxa, that's fine. Can still escape it later. So they probably have a removal spell lined up for this Crusader. Only have the single red mana, so it's going to be kind of tough to play multiple red spells in the same turn. Second Thought Racer. So our opponent is letting us keep Crusader in play for at least one turn. Takes Light of the Stage as our source of card advantage. So my guess is that they have a sweeper lined up and they're fine if I play Fervent Champion and attack for a bunch and then next turn they can wipe the board. Now I don't have any amazing other options this turn. Especially with only single red I'm not guaranteed to be able to play a double champion next turn. But I don't really want to play into their sweeper so... I think I'm just gonna hit for two and then maybe fire off a couple burn spells end of turn. Can always carnival for just black mana. But they need to present a creature first. Pop 
opponent passes. Let's choose a more expensive removal spell for now then. Yeah, there's some red mana. So I could double Fervent Champion. Or I can kind of play it slow. Just hit with Crusader. Maybe play Knight of the Abel Legion, still force a sweeper, and then recover with double Fervent Champion, which is pretty strong. I think I like that plan. Could also Carnage to make them discard, but they have infinite cards in hand, so it's not too effective. So I'll start by attacking. Ah, they do use a Murder Strider. Could kill my own Crusader to deny the 2 3 lifelink half of the card, but didn't think I care too much. So I have 5 cards in Graveyard, so I'm pretty close to escaping Croxa as well. I'll play this untapped just in case. I don't think our life total matters too much. Backwater gains one life. And yeah, there's a Ritual of Soot like we expected. So, just gonna shock them. Although I might want to keep the shock to combo with First Strike to take out Murder Strider, but I guess Carnival would still be enough. And even though I could escape Croxa, I think I prefer just going for a double Fervent Champion this turn. And then probably still play out my lands. And yeah, opponent explodes, so just playing around that Ritual of Soot as well as we can was pretty key in this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. As long as the Crusader survives. So turn one, fetch a mountain, get that uh, tap land out of the way. And then turn two, play Crusader. Could have been correct to play the Blood Crypt untapped in case I need access to a ton of red mana next turn. Well, there's our Pestilent Spirits. And we even have a backup in case the first one dies. The Akron War, interesting. Alright. They're gonna steal Crusader. So what's gonna happen here? The next turn we're gonna be forced to attack with all our creatures. And then we'll end up losing most of our creatures on the third chapter. So probably don't want to play an extra spirit out. But I could skewer one of the opponent's creatures now. Right, let's start by attacking. And then I could light up a stage first here, see what's up. Find more Crusaders. Probably want to play that one next turn. And then this turn I'll skewer plus Croxa. And kill this Paradise Roots. A 
Risen Reef. So they are on Teamer Elementals with uh, Thassa plus a Cronvor. That's a pretty good combo. Alright, can deal quite a bit of damage this turn. So Spirit is forced to attack. Opponent takes 3 down to 10. I've got 6 points of burn in hand. And I can play another Spirit out if I wanted to. Although I might just go for Crusader. Four cards in graveyards. I could light up the stage again. Eh, it's a lot of uh, security critics. And then I think I just go face at this point. Pyrohelix can take out multiple creatures once we play the spirits. Another Chrome War, alright. Alright, with the land I should be able to kill them here. Play Pestilent Spirits. Pyrohelix, two creatures. Attack and then Skewer for lethal. All right, sweet. So good to see a little bit of the Passion Spirit in action here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand definitely suffers from this land coming into play tapped, but still seems keepable. And then ideally we would draw Swamp of the Top. Not a Crusader. I think I'm just gonna fetch a Swamp here right away. And then I can maybe play Crusader on two. Opponent on Sultai with a turn to Thunderacer. At least we've got two Crusaders. So they can't mess that up too badly. Pestilent Spirit, a good way to take out an Uro after they escape it. Which is otherwise a pretty big roadblock for a deck like this. Opponent takes Knight of Ebon Legion, since they can't really cut us off uh, one of our Crusaders. Double Fervent Champion could be a nice play later. Just a tap land for now. Alright, I think I'm just playing another Crusader, hoping they don't have a sweeper of sorts. Because we gotta draw into some lands here. And then hopefully we're better able to convert all these extra cards. Potent sees a handful of action. They might take the spirit if they fear the combo of spirit plus burn spells, but we're pretty far from casting it. Takes a fervent champion, which is the more immediate threat. Puts another Thoderation in the graveyard. Alright. Still no lands. Alright, there's a swamp. So I'm still pretty limited in what I can do. I could just play the spirit here. Hoping there's no sweeper like a ritual of soot. And then I'll have that in play to maybe help me take out a big green creature. But if I draw land next turn I could also just go spirit plus one mana burn spell to clear a path. So I don't necessarily need to play it now. So how about I just play this Fervent Champion 
attack and then I can still carnival for one mana if they play creature. Could see a Tyrant Scorn as well. Take out a uh, Crusader we target here. Assassin's Trophy, don't really mind that one as much. Because I can get another mountain. Now do I play spirits? Probably. So your opponent's got a lot of cards, but they're at 10. And Pestilent Spirit's not very forgiving. So I can spend black mana on Carnival, Killing Crisis, Attack with all. And yeah, opponent's super dead here. Got uh, almost 20 points of burn in hand. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Especially if Crusader sticks around. Turn on Lovestruck Beast. That's definitely one of those creatures that is hard to deal with for a red deck. So the addition of Pestle and Spirit could definitely help. I um, think I'm just fetching now for a Swamp. In case I don't draw land anytime soon. And then still prioritize playing Crusader out. Innkeeper, alright. I might have to kill that one instead. There's a spirit, that's good. Yeah, I think I just gotta kill the innkeeper before it gets out of hand. Which it's kind of unfortunate because it's not a very efficient use of my mana. Could just play Crusader and let them have all the cards. But if they're gonna play Lovestruck Beasts, could be tough to get past. Alright, so now what? Probably want to play the Spirit now, so we can take out uh, Beast next turn. If I play Spirit, then they would maybe leave the token back, and then they could double block Pestilent Spirit. I could Skewer for 3 mana, although that's not very mana efficient. So maybe I do still play Crusader this turn, hoping to draw land, and then can maybe Spirit plus one mana skewer thanks to Spectacle from Crusader. And then take a big hit from the beast. Alright, they have another beast. Yeah, Lobstruck Beast is usually a nightmare for red aggro decks, but... Hmm, did not draw the land, that's a problem. Yeah, really needed a land here in order to double spell. Could light with a stage to find a land, but then I can no longer spirit plus shock or skewer. Could just use two burn spells to take out a beast, but that's not very resource efficient. So I guess I'll light up the stage to hit my land drop. If I miss, it's a disaster, but gotta start hitting these land drops. And then I can play Pestilent Spirits. And then I could always block with it since we have another one coming up. Opponent is on Teamer. And that's a pretty good escape, finding two more Innkeepers, although they can play it this turn. They can cast Incubation. Finding Brazen Borrower. Opponent does get in for 10. Hmm, could just jump with Crusader, could trade for Spirits, 
Next turn I'll be able to play Pestilent Spirits, potentially play two burn spells, taking out a beast and maybe something else. I think I'm okay with the trade here. Keep the cards flowing with Crusader. And then I think I could even attack. And if they double block, I'll just shock a token. Take out the beasts. That Bone Crusher Giant can take out my Pestilent Spirit too. And now they can take out both of my creatures. So not in a great spot here. Missing that land drop the turn we wanted to play Spirit plus a Burn Spell. Definitely costs us big time, although that's a pretty juicy Chandra's Pyro Helix. Let's Crocs off first. This card's another Innkeeper. And then next turn I can easily escape Croxa, although it's not great against Brazen Borrower. More Croxas. I think this turn I just wanna play Croxa for two mana and then just cure the giant, which is also gonna cost me two life. They could also play out a Brazen Borrower to hit me for three. If they have another Bone Crusher Giant, I'm dead. Alright, opponent discards Brazen Borrower. Secure for three mana. And alright, they did have another Bone Crusher in hand, so that's four damage. Plus two from the trigger. GG's. Yeah, still a relatively close game here. Opponent was empty handed now, although they still had a couple of creatures in Adventure Land. And then we were able to maybe escape Croxa to help us take over the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Can probably keep this. I might just uh, play Fervent Champion turn 1. And then turn 2 I could light up the stage right away. Although I'm usually not a fan of playing this in the first couple turns. As it's usually much more effective once we have more mana. Given that I have two copies of Light of the Stage, it's probably fine to go with this line. Sample of Enlightenment, so it could be Jeskai or Blue White. Our hand's not great if it's the case. Alright, it's not the worst, so now probably fetch a Mountain and next turn play Swamp.
And then we can even play Knight of Ebon Legion that picks up a plus one plus one counter. So pretty good start, all things considered. Do I also want to line up the stage? Don't hate it. Alright, so I will waste one of those lands, but we'll get the Fable Passage to put an extra card in Graveyard for Croxa. Fairy Vandal. Alright, it's unexpected, so maybe a blue-white Flyers deck. In which case, the Spyro Helishes are going to be a lot more useful than I thought. Ooh, Staggering Insights. That could be an issue. Although I guess I can just double Pyrohelix to take it out. Put on chumps. And we'll do this now. Alright, that should leave us in a pretty good position. And our opponent agrees and explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. The Fable Passage is not really helping, but... Otherwise, the hand seems fine. And we're up against the Rakdo Sacrifice deck. Just gonna fetch up a swamp here. Right. Do have a lot of cheap burn spells to take out. Cards like Priest of Forgotten Gods, at least. So I could Carnival the Familiar and then Skewer to kill the Priests. It's probably what I gotta do here. If I just play out some creatures, we kind of play into their Priests game plan. Which I don't want to allow. Now I don't have a great answer for Mayhem Devil if that shows up. So this turn... Do you want to get this Crusader in play as soon as possible? So I guess Crusader plus Fervent Champion's fine. Well, their opponent does seem to be stuck on two lands, so giving them extra draw steps towards an extra land is not the best. But we also want to progress our own game plan. So, what am I doing? Probably start with a line of the stage, hoping to find a cheap burn spell to take out the priest once again. Shock will do. It does mean I can't play an extra Crusader, but we still get to play a Knight that also gets a plus one plus one counter. Put on those of the Mayhem Devil. Pyrohelix. Would have been nice to have a Pestilent Spirit here, taking out both of their creatures. Can still attack with everyone, pretty much. And then we'll see what they do. So 
So now I can Parahelix the Mayhem Devil for two. And our point's pretty far behind now. Even if they can assemble Mayhem Devil plus Witch's Oven shenanigans, they're probably still too far behind. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. No real source of card advantage, no Light of the Stage or Crusader, but... Especially if we draw an extra Knight here. We've got a decent aggro start and a couple cheap instants to fuel escape. Ah, that was a good top deck. Facing Temple of Mystery, turn to Gross Spiral, into Temple of Enlightenment, so this is the band's kind of mid-range ramp deck. Which is a matchup where Pestle and Spirit could come in handy for sure. Let's start with Croxa. Discards the Fairy, and we'll get in there. Opponent's missing double white for Shatter, Hero of Precinct 1 instead, alright. I'll shock that as soon as I get priority. Merleaf Pixie, that's unexpected. Yeah, so gonna shock the hero. So maybe not quite the deck I had in mind. So not too close to escaping Croxa. Probably attack with both. If they want to double block Crusader, that's fine. If they block Champion with a Pixie, I can use Carnival to finish it off. Opponent does double block Crusader, so can't really save it here with the Carnival but still get to take out both creatures, and then... Do want to get this Knight of Ebon Legion in play. Could also just uh, carnish my opponent, making them discard two cards. Still won't be able to escape Crocs on next turn. Although we're getting very close, I guess if I draw like a one mana spell I could do it. Because, yeah, we're going to go up to 5 this turn, but I need one extra card for Croxa. I think I still play Knights. It's going to be another hero. Into Deputy. Probably gets rid of the Knights. Alright, so pawns at 9, we're somehow going to have to burn them out. Pyrohelix isn't bad. So I could take out the Deputy of Detention. Or I could take out Hero of Precinct 1. But if I want to take out Deputy, I'll have to use Carnage as well. Probably start by attacking with Fervent Champion, which will inform my decision. Double blocks like that. So, yeah, in this case, I'll probably just take out the Deputy. Could also still go with uh, Carnage to make them discard too. What is better here? I guess we'll just take out Deputy and then keep Carnage as a burn spell.
It's a fairy. It's gonna burn some knights. Better for them to bounce a knight than potentially bounce a croxa, which is a lot more difficult to get in play. Alright, so it's gonna be an uphill battle from here, but uh, with enough burn spells we could still get there. So let's get our last two cards. Ooh. Those were some good ones, Dream Trawler and Frill Mystic. Next turn I can escape Croxa, although the Fairy is going to be able to minus again soon. And these Merleaf Pixies are probably going to kill me. So I can send a knight at their face. Opponent probably just jumps with a token. Escape Croxa, which can block. I'm not that on board. Sure. And if they do force me to pump, I can still escape Croxa, which is important here. Otherwise, I wouldn't make this attack. And our opponent will fall to three. And if they don't have a non-land card they can discard, they will be dead to the Croxa attack next turn. Alright, let's see if they have an answer. Alright, they don't. Sweet, so Croxa gets across the finish line. Key decision here to hold the Carnival Carnage to make them discard instead of uh, using it to save the Fervent Champion. Alright, so we got to see our Pestilence Pyro deck in action. Didn't see a whole lot of Pestilence Spirit giving Instance and Sorceries Death Touch, but it just goes to show that it's not an essential part of the deck and that you can easily win games without it. But it's definitely a nice tool, especially against green decks, where your burn spells might not be enough to take them out. So that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.